I'm Johanna Meyer and I'm the founder of Hope for Wildlife Helicopter Services and I'm also the pilot. So the reason I chose the name Hope for Wildlife is specifically because I think a lot of people are losing hope. Um, in our industry it's, it's very difficult to, to stay hopeful and I think the name is, is, a, is a good motivation to basically show the world that we are still very hopeful and every little effort actually counts. Even if you do something small it really does matter and it makes a difference. Let's break approach, Zulu Sierra, Romeo Delta Sierra, good morning. QNH 1026, Romeo Delta Sierra, Robbie, 44 helicopter at Dude Sprite Civil, requesting lift off for a low level flight. The most rewarding part of my job, I would say, is feeling that I am making a difference. That's, to me personally, that's, that's incredibly important. The minute I feel that, that I'm not making a difference or I'm not making an impact, that's where, where I get very sad. So I feel the rewarding part is to be called out for certain projects, to be able to, to get funds together to actually help with the wildlife emergency crisis. So we're just busy refueling quickly. Um, gonna head out to Messina to go and collect the pangolin that's been confiscated. So we're flying out there, it's the quickest way and the safest way to go and get the pangolin. It's always so valuable and such a privilege working with something as um, endangered and threatened as a pangolin. So hopefully all will go well and we'll bring him back safely. Okay, so here's our precious cargo. We arrived safely here in Messina and um, we have the pangolin. It's safely tucked in here, quite small. So yeah, we're gonna start the journey back. experience um, in my conservation career and, and as a helicopter pilot. I actually got called out to a, a reserve here and um, got called by the security manager and we headed out. I was actually under the impression that they had shots there and they had a carcass and we still have a chance to catch the poachers. So I was all psyched up, geared up, ready. I was there within 15 minutes after the call. And I touched down in a hurry, put the chopper down. I was waiting for the guy that's gonna fly with me. Um, and I saw he's not in, in such a hurry and he's walking towards the helicopter with his weapon. He got into the helicopter and then he just shrugged. And he, I said, okay, where, where, where was it going? And he pointed in the direction and we lifted off and we started flying. And as we lifted off, I already saw the rhino. I said, here's a rhino. It's standing up, it's, it's alive, and I saw this rhino, and it was completely, completely mutilated. Hacked off its, its face, its spine had been chopped with a panga, and she was standing there. And I looked at this animal, and then he said, yeah, we actually have to shoot her now. And I said, no, wait, I just started crying, crying. Terrible. You know, we had to shoot her. Like everything you, you, you fight for and then you've got to shoot this animal, it was just so, I can't believe it. I stay motivated in, you know, in these sad situations where we come across, um, you know, horrific scenes like I've told you about earlier. It's just, I, I think it has a lot to do with my fate. Um, and um, that keeps me, you know, motivated because I, I know there's, like we've said, there's, there's hope for me in my mind, there's always hope. As long as, as there's good people supporting and um, we actually, you know, carry on fighting the good fight. There are definitely risks when it comes to conservation flying, especially in this industry where, where we fly a lot for counter poaching operations. I'm basically alone here with my two little girls. Um, my husband works in Mozambique. It's always something to keep in mind when I fly, when I head out. And I think specifically, if we're busy with night operations, I'll be called up at, let's say, 2 o'clock in the early morning hours and, and gunshots has been reported and they'd like for me to, to head out and go and support. And um, I know that, that poachers, they're extremely dangerous, they're usually heavily armed and they do take shots. That's a definite risk. 
Um, I do wear a bulletproof vest. I do put the back plate of my bulletproof under the seat for in case they'll shoot from, from underneath. So that's a, that is a, it's a real thing to think about, especially when it comes to my will. Um, I might not come back, that's the reality. But we do take that risk and, and we always just um, not take for granted that we will come back, but there's definitely, you're hoping you come back, but there is that, that definite risk that your life is in danger every time you get called out. If I could hope for change in the industry, it would definitely be more teamwork, less politics, more teamwork, you know, because we, we all at the end of the day will work towards the same goal. My dream for tomorrow would be that the efforts that goes into actually education, educating people about conservation has an impact. Because if you look at the effort that goes into communities and into the world to try and just educate them and teach them what rhino horn isn't actually what they think it is, but what it does. Um, stuff like that, you know, I think if, if that education could just sink in and more young kids get educated in the right way, and that's, I think, how we can make a difference. Just to answer your question with regards to what it feels like to actually be involved with the apprehension of a poacher and actually seeing that person. You always see the evil deeds and you always wish if I could just catch this bastard and to actually see that that uh, person lying there on the ground and the, the evilness of the, the expression on his face, just uh, such an incredible, incredible feeling of victory, at least one of them out of the system.